Um, I'm watching The Wire, and there's an amazing quote where it's like, uh, life is the stuff that happens to you while you wait for a time that never comes. That is a clumsy way of saying life is what happens when you're making plans. I like the first one better. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's more it's more elegant. Yours is very like robust and uh, succinct. It's less poetic. Mm, agree to disagree. And I didn't come okay. up with that. I came, that was that was John Lennon, I believe. Or maybe well, maybe it's just a quote that's on a on a like print at When Pigs Fly. <laughs> the local trinket store. Yes, one of many. One of many. One of many, yeah, that uh, managed to survive um, this pandemic somehow. Well, it's online sales. Um and people spending more time at home, so they want to zhuzh it up. Yeah, I guess so. Someone going online ordering a wooden live laugh love plaque with like with a big wooden pig on it. Yep. And then the audience can't see this, but I'm uh, there's one behind me right now, and I'm taking it off my wall because I'm so embarrassed that Mike just called me out like that. <laughs> you love to live, you love to laugh, and you love to love. I love to love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. This is the some. Three L's. This is some iconic cold open banter. Uh yeah, I, it really <laughs> is. You know, we're getting good at the banter part. We're not so good at the rest of the podcast, but our banter is just a hundred, a hundred percent great. Oh yeah. Okay, great. Well, okay, everyone, let's um, Mike, what the hell is this episode all about, huh? Uh, well, we're celebrating two birthdays. Yes. Um, number one, yesterday, May first, was mm-hmm. the. 80th birthday of uh, the titular Citizen Kane. So hell yeah. Um, so you know the that movie uh, often considered to be the greatest film ever made. Uh, so much so that it inspired our podcast. It turned 80 years old. It was in the theaters in 80 years ago, and that's insane. It's insane to think that cinema is 80 years old. I'm excited. Well, cinema's older. I know it's a hundred and. Uh, thirty something. Uh, eighteen eighteen eighty seven, wasn't it? Uh, I thought it was eighteen eighty five, but uh, well, maybe it is eighty five. It doesn't matter. It's around. It's the eighteen eighties. The difference. It was two centuries ago. Yes. So, but, but it's it's up there. I mean, it's old now. Um. Yeah. So the, we're celebrating uh, Susan Kane's birthday. Big big yes. party we're having right now. And we're Huge. also celebrating the first anniversary of our very own podcast from Justin DeCane. So uh, we released our first recording, that being a trailer for our podcast, um, on the 1st of May. So we are, you know, kind of coincidentally, they happen the same time. I'm going to just uh, go ahead and say we did not even know it was uh, Susan Kane's birthday that day when we put that, that thing out. And uh, boy. It was like this was meant to be, Mike. You it and me, was. microphones in front of our faces. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Yeah, it was meant to be. Um, and you are going to town on that bubbly. Yeah, this is number two. I just had a lime. Now I'm having an orange. I also mm-hmm. drank a big bottle of water just moments ago. Might have to pause this recording to, uh, you know... Uh, go pee pee at some point, or if I was in <laughs> Europe, I'd just say the toilet, yeah, because that's how people in Europe say, uh, quite elegantly that they have to use the restroom. If you're in the movie Ghoulies 3, go to use the phantasmagoric toilet, yeah. Oh, I want to ask Mike since we're doing this sort of anniversary episode about Citizen Kane, do we have to do an anniversary episode for the um anniversary of from Justin to Kelly? I mean, are we, we obligated? We can. Uh, Will we? Mm, I don't know. The twentieth anniversary of From Justin to Kelly is June twentieth, twenty twenty three. We can celebrate the eighteenth anniversary in like a month if we really want to. But do you want to? That's I don't not really a want special to. year. No, no, I don't want to. Well, um, I mean, From Justin to Kelly could drink in Alberta, but not in the rest of Canada and not in the United States. I see where you're going with this. Yeah, so it's true. We could it's celebrate true. we could celebrate from Justin to Kelly becoming an adult. 
well legally allowed to vote Mm -hmm. all over the country yeah Yeah, so that's i mean okay there's something there well but i don't want to watch it again nor do i want to talk we've already talked about it too much dare i say dare you say yeah okay let's start talking about citizen kane all right would you say this movie's the goat of cinema i mean i don't know or is orson welles the goat of cinema uh i wouldn't say he is no Mm, okay well all right i tried to set that up (laughs) just didn't work just shot down do you think he is he's one of them Uh, yeah i would suggest maybe um spielberg is Okay. okay or maybe kubrick you're such a sellout well, I mean, Orson Welles, Orson Welles nailed it with uh, Citizen Kane. Mm-hmm. And he had a whole bunch of other movies that were also good. But then yeah. he, but then his track record after that, you know, didn't, it, it didn't really sustain. So how could he be the goat? That's true. That's true. Do you have to be consistent to be the goat? I don't know. I guess. Um, I also wonder, th- and this might be... Um, might be blasphemous, but uh-huh. I wonder how much of Citizen Kane being considered the greatest film of all time is just kind of like uh, hype, you know, kind of uh, hyping itself up. People mm-hmm. like critics being like, well, we said this was the greatest film of all time in the 60s or 70s or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and might as well just keep that going. Uh, yeah, that's very possible. I think I think that could have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I don't know. A lot of it was timing, for mm-hmm. sure. Timing, and uh, it was a funky time in Hollywood, too, like the kind of films that were being made, and this one is very innovative. But is it innovative now? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it still holds, like, let's just say it is. it still holds a special place because, like, literally a film about Citizen Kane just won an Oscar, like, a week ago. So, I mean, obviously, it's still... In the zeitgeist, it's yeah. still in the DNA of cinephiles everywhere. Yeah, cinephiles. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, the the existence of Mank is uh, proof that Citizen Kane is the goat. But is because uh, ain't nobody Paddington making a, actually the goat. Ain't ain't nobody making a Mank esque movie about Jaws. No, ain't that the truth? Yeah. Or yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, also uh, in the news this week. A little yes. bit of current events. Um, <laughs> really aging this uh, specific episode. Yeah, right? current. So this one won't be timeless. A little segment. Like the rest of them. A little segment on our podcast called Current Events Corner. So, uh-huh. um, not to be confused with Film Corner, <laughs> and our other side segment, Movie Corner, where we talk about films and movies, <laughs> but in two different segments that just happen to be named differently. Um, well, every room has four corners, so we got to have another corner, don't we? Yeah, I mean, we have one corner left, I guess. Yeah, I wonder what it'll be. <laughs> uh, the bubbly the, corner, huh? Oh, the bubbly corner, yeah. Bob loves bubbly. It's okay, not, anyways, current events. Let's so, talk about current events. A little Enough current about event. bubbly. Get out of here, bubbly. <laughs> another current event. Uh, yeah, current event corner here. Um, and so in the news recently, Paddington 2 has been... Um, uh, certified 100% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, and mm-hmm. some somebody dug up a 80 year old review of Citizen Kane, which was not positive, and so Citizen Kane went from 100% to 99%. Wow, wow, the usurper. Hey. So yeah, so I guess Paddington Two is considered the greatest film of all time, according to Rotten Tomatoes critic score, and just kind of like the joke of the internet, I guess. Do you agree? No, I do not agree. I've never seen it, so I can't agree. <laughs> I, yeah, neither have I. I've seen the first one on an airplane. I've never seen the second one. Mm-hmm. Is um is uh Paddington the first one like uh, critically acclaimed? Yeah, I think I think all of the Paddington movies are considered really good, but whether they're the greatest film of all time, it's a little bear right that wears clothes and is british and he loves marmalade well he's he's british in that he has a british accent but he's from peru uh what he's from the forests of peru a young peruvian bear travels to london in search of a home 
Finding himself lost and alone at Paddington Station, he meets the kindly Brown family who offer him a temporary haven. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, that sounds better than Citizen Kane to me. Uh, I mean, this is the first one, not the second one. Let's see Paddington 2. Yeah, Paddington 2 is the better of the two films, supposedly. Wow, how often does that happen? The sequel, you the mean? The sequel? Yeah, it's better than the original. Godfather 2, Paddington 2, that's it. That's where it ends. Okay, Paddington, now happily settled with the Brown family, oh, I'm glad it worked out, and a popular member of the local community, picks up a series of odd jobs to uh, buy the perfect present for his Aunt Lucy's 100th birthday, only for the gift to be stolen. Uh, do you think the narrative of Paddington 2 is a circle, like a circle, like a cinnamon roll? That's a line from Mank. Uh, yes, I do, yes. <laughs> Hugh Grant is in this movie. He is, okay. yeah. He plays, okay. I think, the bad guy or maybe a good guy. His name is Phoenix Buchanan. That sounds like a bad guy to me. This is fasc- This is a fascinating episode of our podcast because people get to <laughs> listen to us just like... <laughs> Talk about a movie we haven't seen, don't really have an interest in seeing, and are just kind of like loosely researching live. <laughs> but but researching in real time, so it's real sloppy and real slow. Yeah. Um, well, shit. Do you think, um, I wonder like 10 years from now, will Citizen Kane be back at the top, or, or will it still be number two? I guess it depends if they can find a bad review of Paddington. I'll write one right now. Okay, well, yeah, get out there. Get it, get critic credentials. Get an article printed in a major publication and really take it to, yeah, take Paddington 2 to town there. Just like going out of your way to pursue a new career just to sabotage Paddington 2. It's it's worth it. It's tempting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what um what is the last year being like, Mike? Podcasting, releasing, editing. How does how does year one feel for you? Feels good. Gotta say, it feels good. Okay. Our podcast yeah, yeah. download numbers only growing every day. Not exponentially, yeah. but like enough to justify the existence of this thing, I feel like. <laughs> okay, good, good. What you and me, I feel like our expectations were very, very low. Extremely. And they've been met. <laughs> they've been met and surpassed, I would say, yeah. So, Slightly surpassed. Yeah. Not sure if we're like at Patreon level yet where we can justify saying, hey, give us $5 just because we're doing this thing that you didn't ask us to do. Mm-hmm. Not, I don't not know sure if we'll if we're ever there be there. Yet. I think that we could yeah. be there if we do it for another year or two. Mm, that'd be cool. We could make like 100 bucks a month. We could make 100 bucks, yeah. Um. Okay, well... Yeah, interesting, interesting. But uh it's been a wild ride. Yeah, I do I've had some I've had some great times. We've become better friends live on the air. Yeah, it's true. Uh I, I also wonder how much how this podcast would go if there wasn't a pandemic that seems to only be getting worse, despite the fact that yes. we have vaccines in a surprise plot twist. Like we're here in Alberta, uh the COVID center of north america right now yeah per capita like we have the we're twice as bad as ontario uh who knows if we're what what the yeah i don't know what's the different states are but yeah apparently alberta is the worst place per capita in in north america i believe it so anyway i believe it uh so when you're not leaving the house great time to edit a podcast yeah, I mean, absolutely. But you and you and I, <clears throat> we recorded very uh, inconsistently for like two years. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we had a big backlog but, and, that went fast. <laughs> well, it wasn't that big of a backlog. It was like maybe six episodes or something. No, it was like 12 episodes. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah it did it, go it fast. It was a couple of and months now... worth of backlog that we got, we cycled through. <laughs> immediately and we because well it's because we didn't record any episodes while we were releasing our backlog we should have been just like creating a new (laughs) backlog so that it would just be we'd constantly be like three months ahead but it would be sweet if we had a three-month buffer son of a bitch (laughs) Uh, but now we're recording the day or before Before. we release but which is like we choose to do this and maybe we shouldn't reveal how how tardy we are to the audience, but we choose to re- <laughs> we, to record the day before now, just because it's like, well, it doesn't take that long to edit it. 
it, whether we like it or not, it seems to be the sweet spot in the week for us. It does. It is the sweet spot of the week. It's kind of a good time to just yeah get together and chat. We've mm-hmm. we've had a, mm-hmm. a week to watch mo- watch two movies generally. Yes. Yes. So, um. So yeah. But uh, yeah, I think it's been a good. I think it's been a good year. I think we did a good thing. We're really adding to the cultural conversation. <laughs> I think. I also feel like had we actually started releasing episodes when we uh, started recording them, I feel like we'd be in a better place because the pandemic really just made everybody release podcasts. Everybody just got into That's- podcasting like a year ago, and like. Just the amount of time, the amount of people that I see doing podcasts uh, or just creating podcast content, um, there's just too many now. It's it's. It, I mean, it was oversaturated when we started, but yes. um, even like two years ago or whatever. But it's only becoming more oversaturated. Yeah, I know. And yeah, we would have. Yeah, we should have just started cranking them out. I don't know why we didn't. Uh, you and me, lethargic. Yeah, I think vibes. that's what it is. We're sloths. Yeah, we're friggin' sloths. Just a couple of sloths slurping into the microphone. Yeah, you know, just a couple of sloths hosted a pod for dogs. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. It always uh, catches me off guard. I forget that the fans are called canines. That we we gave them that name yes. without asking. But uh, it happened. Well, uh, yeah. And I always forget. And then you say it, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, canines. That's fun. That's like a that's like a fun thing." Well, yeah. My my logic is we got to come up with a name for our fans because that makes people love you more. Like you know, juggalos. Lady Gaga has her monsters. And yeah. So if you like yeah. Lady Gaga, then you're like, "Well, I'm a monster, I guess." And then you're. And if you love ICP, you're a juggalo. Oh yeah, juggalos. They are crazy about ICP. Mm-hmm. I would say. Well, you're speaking from experience, right? Like, there's a giant poster behind you of yes. ICP. Yeah, I got uh, Shaggy Two Dope, and I got Violent J up there. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, and it's underlit in a wooden frame. Yes, it, yeah, and it is also a black light poster, by the way. So, oh, so I, I have a special black light so installed just to make that poster uh, look that way. Have you ever gone to the gathering? No, but I was thinking we should have a gathering of the canines when we're famous enough. Oh, that would, that would be fun. It'd be like 18 to 23 people showing up. <laughs> <laughs> we should actually. We should have a gathering of the canines and basically just uh, go get President's Choice Cola and Bubbly. Yeah, that, w- that would be great. The fago of canines is Bubbly because you yeah, drink it yeah, every time un- we unofficial. <laughs> uh, it's true. It's true. Or or I'm just drunk. Those are the two options. Yes. Well, well hydrated or extremely dehydrated and tipsy. And, you know, that's that's very suiting, though, because uh, at the gathering of the Juggalos, I'd say people are hammered or on drugs 98% of the time. It's true. I went through a little ICP phase, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, it I did a lot of research on how to, like, source uh, Fago... Soda pop because it's only made in Detroit, Michigan. That's right. There's one plant. It's in Detroit, Michigan, and uh, they've got some wild flavors. And I almost ordered a flat from their website, like tried to wholesale it. But of all the places in Edmonton that you can purchase um, that soda, it's at the Italian Center. That's right. I was going to say I actually know a couple of the Fago How, locations. Why? Why the F? Why the Italian Center? You know what I mean. Well, there's Detroit based terrible, terrible soda. There's a really, really tasty hot sauce that you can get in New Orleans. It's like the mm-hmm. the New Orleans hot sauce called Crystal Hot Sauce. Yeah. Uh, How spicy? Like uh, not very spicy. So it doesn't like uh, hurt your bum the next day, kind of spicy. <laughs> no, uh, unless you just like oh, okay, unless you okay. drink it, I guess. It's not that spicy. Well, it just kind of adds a like a nice little bit of flavor to whatever you're eating. So it's like a salty ketchup, like a Valentina's. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's not even as spicy as Valentina's. Oh, okay. But anyway, um, they have that at the Italian Center also. So really? they they, they just kind of carry a bunch of niche products that you can get elsewhere. Um, it seems like they really curate their selection. 
But we're going to start a new segment right now called Fago Corner. Oh, hell yeah. So we've yeah. completed okay, the fourth great. corner of our room here, <laughs> our pod room. <laughs> and it is eclectic, let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> Movie corner, film <laughs> corner, current events corner, and Fago Corner. So um, uh, you can get Fago at, you used to be able to get it at uh, certain shoppers drug marts in Edmonton. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a place on 75th Street and I'm going to say 80, maybe 90th Avenue. Oh. It's like a like convenience a little... store. It's a little mini convenience store in a mini mall. And they have- Yeah, I know exactly big... where you're talking. Yeah, it's like a red building. It's like a convenience store in yes, it. Yes, on the corner. Yeah, and there's like a, I think there used to be a subway there. And there there's like a, a subway and like place. a Chinese. Yeah, a Chinese restaurant, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that place right there, has a, a pretty big selection of Fago last I checked, like a year ago, I think. And they're not that good, I gotta say. <laughs> no, no, I've I've read that it's like uh, the epitome of mediocre flavor. Yeah, yeah. They've got, and it's like, it almost somehow tastes sweeter than any other soda, you know? Like, it just tastes like you're just somehow. drinking pure uh, high fructose corn syrup. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, you might be just yeah. the straight goods, right? It might just be, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Geez, interesting. Is it expensive? Ah, uh, no, it's like a dollar. Oh, so it's if cheap. You, even, if you even, yeah, if you buy it there, it's cheap. If you you can order it, like I think on Amazon Canada. That's super expensive. But it's more expensive there. Yeah, we did we did order it from there once as a joke, me and a friend, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't worth it. I've got to say. <laughs> 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 well, this has been Mike's uh, Fago Corner, <laughs> and uh, wow, great! I you, also feel like the name is. Wait, why did you end the segment on, and you keep then keep the segment going? <laughs> no, I just wanted to say that it's we're still in the goddamn corner. Okay, oh, yeah, okay it's yeah. a tiny room. You can touch all four corners standing in the middle. Okay, <laughs> so the transition is quick. Also, movie and film corner. Yeah. What about Two him? separate corners <laughs> with sort of synonymous titles makes zero sense. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Um, nobody puts so baby like, in the corner oh. because there's Fago there and baby <laughs> shouldn't have Fago because it will poison baby. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow, that was a great little bit you just did. Thank you. Dirty Dancing. Shout great, out to Jennifer Great Gray. callback to, yeah, a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was just going to say, I really feel like the name is Dicey. You know what yeah. I mean? If you mispronounce like, it, it sounds weird. It's, you're just on the brink of disaster every time you try to indulge in your soda pop fantasies. Yeah. It's like I'm ordering a, like you really got to enunciate. Oh, I know. You know what I mean? It's, it's a tough one. I don't know how long they've been around. I, I assume for quite a while. But uh, I wonder what the genesis of the name was. Uh, I, okay, here's a little bit of genesis I found out about it. So, oh, wow. Shout out to Genesis. Great band. Yeah. Do, 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 In the 80s. Do, 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 do. Oh, that is, that's not Genesis. That's, uh, that's just Phil Collins. Um, no, Phil, Phil Collins um, in the air tonight the, is Genesis. The do, 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 when he was a drummer. He was he, a drummer before I he became that, a solo no, act. Okay, no. We're getting really off. <laughs> holy uh, jesus christ well he was the drummer for genesis no i know that but in the air yeah, tonight is in, not a genesis song that's just a phil collins solo oh you're song. right it is a phil it is you're right you're yeah, absolutely okay, right yeah. now that i think about it no no you're correct you don't need to google it mike is right I, yeah you don't need don't step to me about about phil collins <laughs> i know i don't know anything about genesis but <laughs> but Any, you know lots about phil collins well i know lots about sega genesis okay but I don't know anything. I about. think we need a new corner, Mike. So now it's not a square shaped room. It's a room with five corners. Okay. <laughs> and there's the 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 Phil Collins corner. Okay. But it's it's called Mike's Righteous Phil Collins <laughs> Corner. Because you're so goddamn righteous about your knowledge. Well ay, ay, ay. Yeah, that, we probably won't revisit that one until we do a uh, an episode on the Tarzan cartoon. Like the Disney one? I was just going to say, we should do Tarzan. I used to play that on a Game Boy Color. Mm. And I it, owned it on VHS as a, a film. Was it a good game? Uh, no, it was horrific. It was really, really hard to play and not fun. Arduous. What a, what a cynical what a cynical thing to be a video game 
designer and be like, I'm going to make this game, but because we have a license, it doesn't have to be good because people will buy it for the license, so they don't put the effort in. And then, yeah, the game sucks. Case in point, uh-huh. Superman 64. Although it sounds like they tried to make it good. And it was just, uh, yeah. They just failed super hard. But anyway, the, uh, yeah. okay, well, we just have, okay, we're going to leave this corner. We're going to go back to Fago corner. <laughs> <laughs> just walk a couple of feet across the room. So, no, like, let's, like, I'm telling you, you can touch all four corners standing in the middle. It's yeah, that small. Well, five corners. What's your now? wingspan? For the uh, five corner room. Yeah. I have no idea what my wingspan is. What a question. What a it's question. probably six feet. Yeah, probably. It's approximately your height. So how tall are you? Oh, well, I'm not going to reveal that. Then people will be able to... Uh, I'm not revealing my private information. <laughs> I mean, okay, in, in fact, I'm going to lie. What? I'm okay. going to lie. I'm four foot three. <laughs> you give away your height and all of a sudden they have your social insurance number. And it's like, what? Yeah. How did that work? Okay, well, whatever. This is because my social insurance number is just my height repeated uh, <laughs> nine times. <laughs> Three, yeah. Uh, geez, nine times. Yeah, okay, yes. Yeah, well, I mean, sense. nine divided by two is 4.5, so 4.5 <laughs> times oh, is what I meant. <laughs> okay, talk about Fago Okay, soda, well, there's please. not a whole lot. Fago, the brand, was founded in 1907. The What? Yeah, it's been around for a long time. The Russian-born Faginson brothers, pronounced Faginson, oh. Perry mm-hmm. and Ben created Fago, and they shortened the name to Fago in 1921. Since they found mm-hmm. Faginson didn't fit on the labels very well. This is from a Thrillist article. Um, well, I was thrilled. Well, then they did their job. Um, fascinating. I would have assumed like the company would have incorporated in like the 50s or something. But 1907 or whatever the hell you just said, that's impressive. We should do an anniversary episode when uh, Fago turns 110. Uh, okay. Oh, they'd already did. 120. 120. 120, yeah. Because it, it, yeah, it already turned 110 oh, like a long, several years ago. Uh, so that's Fago Corner. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. I've learned a lot. I've never had it. Um, they've got some wild and kooky flavors, don't they? Also, you just said like you ended the segment, and then I just kept going. You, this is, it's happened twice, and people will be like, I can't "I'm aware believe, of it," and I'm going to double down. I can't believe people will be like, "I listened to their birthday episode where they were supposed to talk about the 80th <laughs> anniversary of Susan Kane, and they mostly just talked about Fago." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I wanted to hear about Orson Welles, and uh, instead they talked about Fago for 48 minutes straight. Um, but do you have any, any last thoughts on Fago or, or do we want to just keep talking? Well, about yeah, it? I just, aren't they famous for like having absurd flavors? I wouldn't call them absurd. You know what I'm going to do while we're in Fago corner, a corner we probably won't revisit a heck of a lot. I'm just uh-huh. going to list all of the flavors. So what do we got here? We got this is from the Fago website, fago.com slash flavors. We got fruit punch. We got yep. cre- vanilla cream soda and diet uh-huh. cream soda. We got rock and rye. We got cola, mm-hmm. raspberry, blueberry, pineapple, orange, jazz and bluesberry, ginger ale, tonic, diet twist, which is like a uh, Sprite. Ohana lemonade and iced tea uh, tonic, which I already said. There's diet tonic. What? <laughs> Isn't it just Wait, water? What the fuck? Isn't it just carbonated water and there's a diet version? Oh, and then they have sparkling water, sparkling orange. Oh, so they're getting into the like bubbly. They're getting into the bubbly territory now. So, so wait, just before water. you keep going, I'm on the Fago website and it says flavors. If you want to look through every available Fago flavor, you may want to get comfortable. There are a lot, over 50. Find your favorite or a flavor you've never had and give it a try. Well, that's, what, that's why I said I was going to read them all because I was. Well, no, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm glad. Keep, keep, keep well, going. You're I'm not going to go. Job. Yeah. So sparkling water, sparkling orange, sparkling lime and lime, sparkling grapefruit, sparkling cherry, club soda, Arctic sun, cherry cola, cotton candy, grape, gold. It's just called gold. I know. I see that. What the fuck? <laughs> I wonder what that uh, tastes like. I wonder, it's gold. See, there are absurd I flavors. Cotton candy, 
Gold. Uh, ginger Ale. An old standby for me, Dr. Fago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it cream says soda delicious again. on it. Oh, yeah. Cream soda and diet cream soda. So when they say there's 50 flavors, sometimes there's variations where it's diet. Ooh, there's some fun ones coming up. Candy apple. Yep. Black cherry. 6040, which I believe <laughs> to is seven up, maybe. Or what yeah, is that? Yeah, it's like uh lemon it's like lime and lemon mixed together. Or like uh it looks like uh grapefruit and lime mixed together. Yeah. And the ratio would be sixty forty. Yeah, there's uh root beer, um mm-hmm. red pop. Uh, let's see, we got pineapple and watermelon. Did I say that one already? Yuck. No, you didn't, but that's nasty. Peach, orange, uh, Ohana raspberry lemonade, Fago moon mist, which the label is- Honeydew. Clearly, honeydew? What do you mean? Or not honeydew. What's the- Mountain dew, sorry. Mountain dew. Jesus Christ, not honeydew, not the fruit. Oh my God. Not the fruit or the Uh. muppet. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm so dumb. Anyways, yeah. continue. Ohana Punch. <laughs> wow, Ohana, you really agree to that quickly. Ohana okay. Punch looks like it's just Hawaiian Punch. Like they just literally sealed the label like style. Yeah. Ohana Lemonade, Ohana Strawberry Banana, Ohana Kiwi Strawberry. So it looks like they're kind of getting into what the Ohana sub brand of Fago. They're kind of doing the. Um, like a Hawaiian yeah. thing. Uh, so anyway, we're at the, almost at the end here. So we got. Uh, Ohana lemon iced tea and Ohana, no, that's it. Actually, no. Ohana lemon iced tea and moon mist blue, which is like. Which looks good. Yeah, it's basically like Mountain Dew, but if it was like neon blue. Uh, And then diet Arctic Sun, I guess. So I listed all of the flavors. I didn't say all of the diet flavors. So No, you you don't need to. Can I read the description of Arctic Sun? I mean, drinking this grapefruit cherry pop. Feels like floating in water of the perfect temperature. Mm. D- isn't that enticing? A little bit, yeah. Doesn't that tickle your fancy just a bit? My fancy's a bit tickled. Just yeah. A bit. Okay, we should really leave the <laughs> Fago corner. We've given it a lot of credence. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know, maybe, oh. maybe, maybe canines will just be like, you know what? We're just gonna drink Fago too. <laughs> Instead is of that being our like, we official... need to have our own drink, We're, like the official <laughs> drink of, well, the unofficial drink of from Justin DeCane is Fago. Also, you have to put so also it's... in brackets. It's Fago. Also, <laughs> like we also are just doing the Fago thing, even though we're not from Detroit. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, and we don't have any ties to Detroit. I've never been there. Have you? No, I have not. Yeah, okay. I've been to. Okay. I think I've been to Windsor, Ontario, which you can see Detroit from. Hmm. Um, okay, well, um, we should, uh, talk about Orson Welles a little bit. Mm, you, yeah, I mean, we could. Or. We could also talk what? about Fago somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm game. Do you think, um, actually, this is a question I have, and I do think it's pertinent. So, Fago was founded in 1907, right? I recently learned that fact, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd have obviously, to agree. The circles that Orson Welles would have been floating in, he must have either been in a room where someone was drinking it, Mm -hmm. right? And he's hanging out in New York a lot. New York is not close to Detroit, but also not that far. No, it's not that far. So, so obviously, like he would go to establishments, and they would probably have uh, Fago on on tap or in glass bottles or whatever, like you know. And I bet you. Orson Welles wanted like a nice crisp soda and it was maybe a, a Fago crisp soda at some point. Do you think that's like possible? Um, I do think he he may have drank it, yeah. Like the odds are high that he would have either had it at least once or a lot or he was in a room while someone was drinking Fago and went, wow, this is sure tasty. Oh, I bet. I bet, yeah, he do was you, like, oh, this is... This was really tasty. I can't do an impression. <laughs> do you think he um said like, "Can I have a fago, please?" Do you think he ever said that? I think he has said that that line once. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. I googled. Uh, f- I 
I googled phagosis and cane to see if there was any sort of actual connection, and there was nothing. I'm sorry to oh, say. Oh wow! You the the like you googled it and it just said, "Oops, there's nothing here for you. Mm-hmm. Go away." Yeah. Oh uh, wait. Well, wait. Uh, hold on. So we just talked probably for uh, we talked probably for 20 minutes about phago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we're yes. burying the lead here. You said you went through. You had an insane clown posse phase. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not like genuine, like fandom. Mm-hmm. I um, uh, we have mutual friends. Uh, and uh, with one of them, I didn't know who ICP was, and they introduced me to ICP as a bit, and I was like, "This is great!" Like a Detroit-based rap group, and they're like two just kind of middle-aged redneck dudes Mm -hmm. and and then so and then i learned about the gathering right right and there's a really fun uh rabbit hole you can go down with the gathering um advertisements like the trailers for it oh yes i've seen those yeah very anywhere from one to like 28 minutes and it is some of the most fun i've ever had just the funniest shit i've ever seen them trying to advertise the gathering and also the the defense like they'd interview fans and they'd be like yeah i'm a uh what the hell are they called Jug- yeah i'm a juggalo and i also have a college degree there's a lot of that and uh it's a good time i really really enjoyed it so by phase i mean i never like listened to icp but i enjoyed being on the periphery looking at it sort of from an objective lens a very judgmental objective lens, but whatever. Yeah, so that that was my phase. Nothing too crazy. I don't I don't have like a stack of CDs of ICP. I know that's what you want me to say, but I, it's I not do. True. I mean, my brother had a copy of the Great Malenko, their first major label album, I believe. Mm-hmm. And I have listened to it. And how was it? Not actually as bad as one would think. Why? The Didn't j- we talk about ICP in the um, Moby episode? Well, why would we? Well, why are we talking about them now when we should be talking about Orson Welles? Uh, because it came up and it's, I guess, pertinent for some reason. I don't know. Okay. Touche, touche. Well, Anyways, Mo- Moby that was is, my phase. Moby is two degrees from the Insane Clown Posse because he uh, was ripped on by Eminem. Mm-hmm. Uh, in one of his songs, I can't remember which one it was. Will a real please, will a real slim shady please stand up? Maybe. And then Eminem is from Detroit, and he knew the Insane Clown Posse before they all got famous. Well, there you go, there you go. That's fascinating. Yeah. So, so I I have heard what uh, like the Great Malenko, and mm-hmm. I have like sampled a few of their a few of the other tracks, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the only song platter. I've listened to is uh, "Magical Miracles." Oh with yeah, miracles, the really right. um, uh, amazing line, uh, "Motherfucking magnets, how do they work?" Mm-hmm. Which is like just an astounding piece of writing. Um, and then SNL also did a very funny cover that just kind of felt like an actual ICP song. Yeah, with Bobby Moynihan, and it is gold. They also did uh, a. They also did parodies of the uh, Gathering of the Juggalo, um, advertisements. Ads. Oh, yeah. oh, really? I haven't seen any of those. You, yeah, check them out. There's some funny bits in there. It's just funny. All of the fun names they have for the characters are the different mm-hmm. bands. There's a guy named Ass Dan, <laughs> who who died, I guess, in one of the ads. Yes. Yeah. So it's well, like, no, rest in he, peace, he Ass dies. Dan. He dies in every ad. Like yeah. he keeps dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's a great bit. That's a great bit. Um, okay. Well, that's any do you have any other questions for me about ICP? <laughs> it's a pretty it's a pretty um uninspiring answer, I know. Mm, I mean, I, I have no questions that I couldn't find out the answers to myself. Wow. Either by going on the internet or looking inward. You you heard it here first. Like I said. Uh, life is the stuff that happens to you while you wait for a time that never comes. Yep. I might be fucking that up, but that's from The Wire. It's a great quote. It's better than Mike's quote. I guess we can talk about Susan Kane and Orson Welles. 
you know, you and I watched Mank a little while ago. It Mank won Best Cinematography like a week ago at the Oscars. It did. It was nominated for a bunch of other awards. Didn't win any except for like production design or something something like that or costume design. One of those two. Wait, didn't it win Best Camera stuff? Yeah, Best best Cinematography. It won two. It won Best Cinematography and then it won either production design or costume design. Yeah. Uh, which makes sense. Um, but anyway, so that film's like still, you know, floating around. Kind of seems like nobody watched it because it's never trending on Netflix, but I don't actually know if that's a good metric. It was trending on Netflix for a day, I believe, and then it it, it, oh. prom- it promptly went under out of the top ten. And it was trending on Twitter, but only because people like the term mank. Like people like saying mank. It is fun to say it. Uh yeah. Kind of hurts your mouth to say, and then you mank. just say it a lot. Saying mank is like eating Sour Patch Kids, and then your mouth is raw after, but it's mm-hmm. worth it and kind of addictive. Anyways, so then we did the mank episode, and uh, it makes me want to watch Citizen Kane again, which I haven't done yet, but I want to. I'm going to watch it soon. I'm going to watch it soon. It's a great goddamn movie, and I'm stoked to see it again, especially after watching mank. Well, good. Um, watch it. It's a good movie. Should we do a, um, um, I was trying to think of a way we could justify watching it again. I guess this episode is the, the episode. We should have watched if there it was, for this episode yes. instead of talking yes. about watching it after. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, that's 100% true, but we didn't do it, so whatever. I've seen it enough. We can just talk. I don't know if it's even interesting to talk about Orson Welles okay. that much. Like pre, pre-movie, pre I don't know. He's like an interesting guy, like an interesting hustler like he was married when he was like 19 Mm -hmm. um he like uh lived in ireland when he was 16 and that's when he like found acting he's also like a magician um and his parents died when he was really young so he had like a really interesting life leading up to what became like his film career um and then there's of course the notorious uh hg wells debacle that happened that i think is overstated not actually that crazy but war of the worlds he did a radio play and everyone thought it was real so apparently so the myth of the result created by the combination meaning like all the things that they did for the uh war of the worlds broadcast um was disparagingly mentioned by adolf hitler in a public speech in 1938 so adolf hitler had beef with orson welles specifically well that's fascinating yeah, that's kind of cool, don't you think? Yeah, and then Orson Welles featured him in his movie. Yeah. Did oh, yeah, cameo. yeah, right, in the newsreel stuff. Yeah, he did a cameo, and not like, you know, one of those things where he wishes you a happy birthday for 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> happy no, <actually>, birthday. <laughs> that was an amazing cameo. I forgot that he's in the News on the March thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that they, like, uh, put in... Kane. I forgot they did that. Anyways, I don't know. He's an interesting guy. Um, but he's also like, uh, oh, I guess we should talk real quick. Have you seen uh, F is for fake? No, I have not, but I do want to see it. And we maybe should talk co- about we should maybe talk. We should maybe cover it on the pod one day. I think we should. I've seen it. Mm-hmm. And it's quite a cool like meta documentary. Yeah, that's what um, it, it always seems ex- interesting to me. Because it's a meta yeah. thing that Orson Welles made. And he made it over a very long time and no one wanted it to be made. Have you watched um his last film like that Netflix released last year? Um have you um, seen it? Christ, I can't remember what the hell it's called. Right. Uh, it was called The Other no, Side of the okay. Wind. Right, 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 right. Yes. We have talked about this on a previous episode and I have not seen it, but I did watch the documentary about it, which also came out the same day on Netflix. Which was really a good documentary. Yeah, it was pretty good, but I should watch it. I understand it's weird, kind of bad. There's a lot of nudity in it, and um, that's about it, I guess. Um, that's a really good description. It is not a good film. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like uh, visually super weird, plotless, um, doesn't make any sense. There is a lot of nudity. The documentary about it, though, is great. Yeah, and like John, Hust- like John Houston's in it. Peter Bogdanovich. Like, there's some really famous people. Like, why the hell did John Houston star in this movie? I don't know. 
Also, Bog was and, uh, his uh, like right hand man. Oh, that's right. Weren't they like really good friends and yeah. they did interviews and stuff? But Peter Bogdanovich did that to a few directors, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Bog was a bit of a. You, uh, you're saying that like you know him. Is that what he's called, Bog? I don't know. I, that's what I heard. Oh, because Bog is such a like Bogdanovich is, I guess, kind of hard to say. Like saying Mank. Yeah, but Bog like is just like, ooh, uh, wet ground. Whatever. Um, Have you ever been in a bog? Uh, No. Have you? Oh, I mean, I've been in a muskeg. Is that like a bog? What the hell is that? It's like bog-esque, I would say. It's like wet ground. Like I had boots that got stuck in the mud. Yeah, that's a bog. And like my, I just like stepped and then my boots were stuck and I like stepped sock first into into the bog. <laughs> uh, did you, um, did it like slowly eat you and then somebody had to throw you a rope and pull you out? Um, yeah, actually, yeah, that's what happened, yeah. <laughs> oh, and wow, my, And wow, my horse okay. sank, my horse sank in it too. Oh no, you lost your horse? Yeah. With, with uh, side bags filled with fago, you lost all your bottles of fago? <laughs> yeah, oh I no. I couldn't Not make the Arctic delivery to crush. the king. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm really sorry that happened to you, Mike. That's really have... tragic. I'm sorry too. Yeah, that was a sad day. Um, I forget why we're talking about bogs, but whatever. We're talking about Peter Bogdanovich. We're talking about Orson Welles. We're talking about oh, oh, right, right, right. Um, well, yeah. I don't know. There's lots of cool stuff. Let's watch F is for Fake for the podcast. Yeah, it's we should really do that. A neat, neat movie. And it's like fun, and because he he's always been uh, so apparently Orson Welles was a famous prankster. Also, Ooh, I read, I, like. I read. Oh yeah, you're all about pranks, aren't you? I mean, I'm not all about them, but I appreciate a good prank. Well, you're all about Fago. You're all about pranks. You're all about that horse. You never stop talking about that horse you lost in the bog. Anyway, so I I had this book as a kid, and it was about all the famous directors, and it was just like a. The, the hidden truth behind all of these directors. And uh, it was basically just like slanderous and uh, said a bunch of mean things about all these directors, like secrets that they had that nobody knew about. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how truthful it is, but there's a story in it about Orson Welles and he was such a prankster and he had like this New York or LA like rooftop pool mm-hmm. and he had lots of famous people and he put dye in it, like that dye that turns really dark blue when you pee. Mm-hmm. And he put it in for this house party. And then somebody, I forget who, like really, really famous, went in the pool, swimming around, splashing, just splashing around, having a good time, did a little pee pee. And uh, everyone laughed at that person because Orson Welles had dyed the pool. Mm. That's kind of actually, fun, isn't it? The, the person actually did do, as you say, a little pee pee. Yeah, like did pee pee in the pool. Yeah, who pees in the pool? Not a little, maybe a lot. I don't know. Well, they deserve derision. Who pees in a swimming pool that everybody has to use? Uh, great question. Great question. I think it's still a little bit mean, but also maybe it's meaner to pee in somebody's pool. Yeah, that's an insane thing to do. Um, but would you pee in a lake? No. Really, you're you're like you're treading water in a lake. You wouldn't just do a little pee pee. You're like, ooh, the bathroom is uh, like six hundred meters away. I'm gonna pee in this lake. Like you're already treading water. You're you're already sopping wet. Well, I don't know. I guess it depends if other people are swimming nearby because then they could get pee in their eye. Um, good, good question. I'll what about you- all the fish peeing, man? Well, not sure, but you know what? It's okay. already nasty. I'll tell you a little story. So, oh, here we go. <laughs> we were on uh, Salt Spring Island, and we're like, mm-hmm. you know what? Let's go for a swim in one of the lakes, because what else are you going to do on Salt Spring Island? We go sw- swim in the one of the lakes, right? Mm-hmm. So we get there, and we're just about to go in the water, and like we turn to our right, and there's a lady there, and she mm-hmm. is holding her like child, who must be like a toddler, two or three years old, who the the child is fully nude. She's just <laughs> holding it out and then like holding it up like uh, Simba from the Lion King. Yes. And then the baby is just urinating from its penis, like right, <laughs> you know, like a a beautiful arc, like yeah. right into the lake that we were stepping into. And I was like, that is rotten. 
So um, the thing is, Mike, there is no such thing as a lake that hasn't just been urinated in massively by a human population. Oh, I know. I know. You're basically so if just you're swimming like in a really going to get germaphobia about it, you know, like, come on. All lakes are nasty. Yeah, exactly. That's why I don't swim in them. And that's, well, also going back to lakes, uh, that's what they make Fago out of. So lake water. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was dirty river water. That's I mean, why it's, so it's probably cheap. both. But a river can be fed by a lake, maybe? It can be. Yeah, well, Sh- shit, goddamn. Well, sh- should we go That's into deltas? Great... Should we start talking about deltas and, like, and inlets and stuff? <laughs> Schools, or, yeah, uh, sounds. Yeah. Sounds, <laughs> like the, yeah, like there's a sound in Washington. No, we absolutely shouldn't. Um, The Hudson's Bay. Um, any other Orson facts you want to share? Um, so yeah, he was apparently a very good magician and a huge fan of it. And then F is for fake is kind of his only like documentation where he really gets to explore magicianry, mm. but magic. I guess the word would be magic. Um, I, I know that's not that interesting, but it is fun to watch, and I believe it's on YouTube full length for free. If Orson was still with us, would he? As like a hundred and four whatever year old man, would he um, be on fool us with um, Penn and Teller? I hope so. What an amazing guest to have! Oh, I know. Don't you think? Yeah, and what a career too! Like Citizen Kane, all the way down to the Transformers movie, all the way down to uh, Penn and Teller. What do you mean Transformers movie? And he plays a character called Unicron in the Transformers movie. The animated one in the 80s? The animated one in the 80s, yeah. Oh, shit, I didn't know that. He's the voice of, like, the bad guy, robot planet guy. That's a good voice for a character like that. That's the voice that, uh, you know, instilled fear in thousands of Americans. Suppose people say that Orson didn't uh, understand what he was doing. But, well, like, making that movie? Yeah, but I think I also read that Orson knew what was up with Transformers and what, and he just thought the idea was fun because he's an actor. And like, yeah, he just likes to play. I bet you he was doing magic tricks to the recording sound booth people. He just likes to play. You, you know, yeah. you know when actors uh, like work together and just like, just like, it's great. We get a play. You know when people say that? Yeah. Oh, oh, I know many people who have said that. We have m- mutual friends who have said that. Really? Who have said we get to play? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grown adults saying like, oh, like we, we got to play or oh, it's just so much fun to play. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, I hate when that's said. <laughs> <laughs> also, when, when actors are uh, really into clowning, going back to clowns. Oh. Boy, yeah, ICP I, clowns. Yeah, I've been in a room with an actor or two, actually, probably who like we were uh-huh. at. A, I don't know. We'd be at a, like a thrift store or something like that, and um, they'd like pull out a shirt and be like, "Oh, my clown would love this." Like they talk about their clown in the oh. person. Oh. oh, that makes me nauseous just thinking about being in that situation. I'm getting physically ill. No, yeah. I hate that. Okay. No, not a fan. And clown, I've taken a clown workshop by force. I didn't choose to. Oh, it wow. You were forced to take forced a clown to workshop. It. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to get out of it and couldn't. How? What was um, the context here? What was the, what was the context? I was in high school. Oh, okay. Yeah, like it was for drama class or whatever. But uh, and, they, and they like flew in a clown guy. What was? From, like Montreal. What was your clown's name? Um, I don't remember. We had to put on a red nose so that we were like in clown or whatever. Yeah, it's the mask. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the mask. Uh, and then you have to like find its walk and its posture and yeah. like which part of its body it leads with. All of this, like as I describe it, is the bane of my existence. <laughs> like, like the craft of acting for me is something I do not ever want to like do or take extremely seriously. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah. And then I know lots of people who have taken like clown camps, like month long. We're in the woods and all we do is clown. And then I've met people who are like, Ooh yeah. Like I I was in the clown Institute in New York and like I had to be my clown for a year 
and uh, my, my clown got arrested by the police or my clown did this and it's like no you did that <laughs> not your clown fuck you you did that god damn it yeah you were pretending uh, to be a adult with a baby mind Oh, just clowning grosses me out. It, I'm physically revolted by. I didn't. Uh, I did not clowning. know that I would trigger you like this. Yeah, no, clowning is deeply upsetting for me. As is the phrase, uh, and I know I said it, but I didn't really mean it. But uh, like, oh, it's so fun to play, or like, we're just gonna play. Like in this rehearsal, let's just play. <laughs> oh, I hate that. Well, Bob, you don't think that when we meet to do a podcast that. We're just playing, you know? No, absolutely not. I'm gonna try I'm gonna no. try and remember to end this episode with hey Bob, thanks for thanks for playing with <laughs> playing me. Playing with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like been fun adults. to play with you for the last year. Oh man. Well, and like you and I, we've we've done a lot extensive improv. Okay. I'll I say that. I know it sounds weird, but I said it. Um mm-hmm. and you do a show with somebody you like don't know or you do know, and they're like, oh just Thanks for playing with me tonight. Like, that was great. Like, so great to play. I've never said that to somebody. I'm like, oh, that was a fun show. Or like, that bit you did was hilarious. It's never like, oh, like, that was so fun to play. Like, I love the way you play. Get out of here, okay? This but why, what like does a, your, okay, okay, we're going to do a little bit of psychoanalysis now. <laughs> <laughs> what is your aversion to this? Is it just, uh, I just you think have it's some ridiculous. sort of fear of childhood? Like, or of like rever- reverting to your childhood state? Like, do you, do you resent no. some, some element of your own childhood? You like, you won't, you won't channel that as an adult. Good question. I had a great childhood, great imagination, did play a lot as a child when you should be playing. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. Like, do, do you think that as an adult, we should act like adults? No, that's not what I'm saying. Because, like, I I think it's it's almost exclusively the vernacular that upsets me. It's not it, the it, yeah. act of playing. Like, we do improv. It's ridiculous. I've been a human chair for somebody. I've done that. <laughs> I've I've pretended to be a cat on stage. Unironically, always like, always I'm embarrassing when you play this. an animal. Not you, just oh. the royal you. Everybody plays an animal. It's oh, always embarrassing yeah. when someone is like exactly. an adult being an animal and like really, but also playing the character. Some of my best work is being, you know, uh, like an alpaca, giraffe, like really, really lanky animals. Yeah. Um, especially with balance issues, I've really, really hit some home runs, so to speak. Um, mm. And one could categorize that as play, but I don't. Um, I think it's just the vernacular. I don't know. No, you and I are d- a couple of dumb adult men, and we do a podcast. Like that's stupid. Yeah. We, you know, you should never lose your sense of fun, but saying play earnestly like it's your job is for some reason very off putting. Yeah. Well, but I also think like when people talk about their craft, like when people like actors talk about acting, I do roll my eyes. It just sounds stupid. Well, it is weird because it is just pretending. Mm -hmm. And that is Mm -hmm. like a very childish thing in a way, like, like in a way. Uh, you know, some of the greatest pretending though is happening in our lifetimes. You know, watching yeah some we we, we watch people pretend all the time when, for our podcast. Oh yeah, 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 and we we like it. You and I seek that out, but uh, but yeah, just um, yeah, hearing people talk about pretending as if there's like some sort of magic trick or there's some sort of like really deep, deep like whatever you have to do. I did watch an interview with mm-hmm. Anthony Hopkins who recently won the Academy Award and he just talked about his process mm-hmm. which was read the script a whole bunch mm-hmm. or memorize all the words and just like break down all of the you know what the scene is about uh, and just kind of like go over that a bunch of times until it's just kind of in you mm-hmm. uh, and there's nothing flashy about it it's just like do the work really hard on it yeah, and that's that's fun. It's like not romanticized and it doesn't sound ridiculous. It's just like do your homework and then get it done. Yeah, and, and I'm into that. But there's no kind of fantastic kind of uh supernatural or like tapping into a child spirit kind of like element to it, you know? Like mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. with some acting where people are channeling some some other thing. It's he's just like I'm just playing this old man 
who has dementia. And I just kind of memorized these lines. And then said, I just did my job. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm into that. Like, that's more uh, on my level, you know. It's like, uh, you know, that famous Laurence Olivier quote when he's like, he hates method, and he's like, it's called acting, you know, yeah. like that that whole thing. And I'm like, yeah, that kind of resonates with me more than people who romanticize the process or like what they get off on is like the process leading up to a performance and not even the performance itself, you know? Yeah, like what, are you, what about Daniel Day-Lewis though? Yeah, like I, I don't ever want to hear him talking about acting. I'll watch the guy, but like he sounds ridiculous and he's also uh he hates talking about his like his thing like whatever his style is so he he avoids it and i don't know if he'd use the word play he's a good actor like i love phantom thread i thought he did a good job Uh, but i thought that he stays in character all the time he does he's a method actor yeah yeah but he doesn't but he, he also says that he doesn't do that like it's there's a lot of contradictions like it's i think it's fetishized i don't know if i said that correctly his approach specifically is sort of mythical and mm-hmm. they're like, wow, like he's just Daniel Plainview for a year and a half and whatever. But it's like, if you hear anecdotally from folks on set and it's like, it's really not that intense. Like he'll still eat a grilled cheese sandwich and ask how your kid is. Like he's, yeah. he's not like, well, this is a good grilled cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is, exactly. So it's, it's, yeah. It's not all fucked up. What is know, this like... cell phone you have, you say? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just questioning everybody on modern technology. Yeah, that just that's, aye, aye, aye. <laughs> that's really funny. A modern uh that's a sketch right there. Just like a person who's a um uh who's a method actor, but they're playing like a period character. And yeah. so as soon as the camera stop rolling, they're still in character, but now all they do is just be like, What is this? And just like he's <laughs> marveling at technology. Never seen a truck. Have you or a seen car um? Before. What is a camera? Have you, have you seen the uh, the uh, uh, documentary about Jim Carrey playing Andy Kaufman? I have. Or yeah. Char- Andy Kaufman. Yeah, like that is horrific. Yeah, I think, but I think there's a meta bit to that. I think that they were they're doing it as a joke. I think a little bit. I think he genuinely pissed people off. Oh, maybe he did. And uh, I, that's just not worth it. Yeah, but he was at the height know. of his powers then. He was. He could do anything he wanted. But like Milos Foreman was his director, and he was just kind of like shitting all over that guy. Yeah. And the crew, and like I like I don't have time for that. I don't I don't know who does. And Only like he does. Man on the Moon was like a good enough movie, but it wasn't like it's not Citizen Kane. Yeah, no, it's not brilliant. It's just basically like, hey, remember Andy Kaufman? Here's a bunch of stuff he did. And then he died. And then he dies. Like, it's just a yeah. sad movie, and it's really not that crazy. It's just kind of your normal bio film. Mm. I bet you, you know, to take it back to Orson Welles real quick, I bet you that guy wasn't on the set of uh, Citizen Kane being a real dickhead and staying in character and stuff. No. No, probably He's not. probably just hanging, like, shooting the shit, drinking beers with, with the buds, and then it's like, oh, the camera's rolling, or, like, we're, we got to direct this scene. Like, let's let's do it. You know, and problem solving. <clears throat> it was all, it was a bunch of buds because it was all of his theater friends. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it was a bud. It was a, like when you know when nowadays when there's just like oh, I love going to going to set and getting to play because all my friends are there. Like a lot of <laughs> a lot of people when they're making a studio comedy, they just love it because it's just like all their friends getting together and just goofing off and having fun. Like that's yeah, what it was yeah. like for them, but they probably didn't. Orson Welles wasn't like. Hey man, thanks for you know, thanks for just letting me play today. You know, we just played. I bet you they never once play like s- saying that you're playing like as an adult in a whatever capacity as an actor. That probably wasn't a thing until like the seventies, maybe even the nineties. Maybe even the nineties. Like I think that is a new thing, and it is revolting to me. <laughs> I. Just I that's that's just who I am. That's that's my baggage. That's my baggage. All right. Well, um, let's uh, change the topic a little bit. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Very so good. I just mean like like let's wrap this this episode up a little bit. Yeah, we um, should wrap this puppy up, as you huh? say. Yes. So this yeah, is yeah. Uh, the culmination of one year of podcasting. 
Yeah, Happy this also might us. be our worst episode, which is kind of a fun thing, like a bookend to our first season. A big F you to the canine for sure. Yeah, this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I I love talking about Fago. I love listening to people talking about it. <laughs> and one day I'm going to drink it. I haven't mm. yet. I'll, I'll, I'll buy you some then. Oh, that'd be nice. It's my birthday in four months. Okay, well, I'll buy you a flat of Fago for your birthday. Oh God, a flat. Okay, well, great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Any any like changes you want to make to the pod? Any any like, yeah, just like let's look like let's navel gaze a little bit at our podcast and say, oh, how, how could we improve this? What works? What doesn't I think, work? I think we should uh, maybe knock down a few walls in our room and make a few more corners. Okay. Good. Good. Oh, oh, you know what? I actually had an idea. It would be fun if every episode we had like a mini, uh, dare I say, Kane corner where be- because like Kane's the OG film, mm-hmm. in parentheses, the goat uh, of films, um, it would be cool to uh, like, we we have the two films we're doing, whatever they are, you know, uh, you know, Ernest goes to jail and uh, whatever the other movie is. But then we're also like, how are these two films similar to Citizen Kane? And we just do a real quick like, oh, this is similar to Citizen Kane for these three things or whatever. And it'd be like a fun little tie in so that we talk about Kane every dang episode. Mm-hmm. That's an idea. I just thought of that yesterday. All right. Because right. there's a lot of it. like, yeah, yeah. There are a few movies where I was like, oh, you know. This this also relates to Kane. Well, I was thinking, what if we change the format up? So instead of being like, we introduce the movies, we talk, mm-hmm. we give them context, we then we compare them, mm-hmm. and then we kind of just riff. What if what if the podcast is one long segment? So we just kind of drop comparisons as we're as we're talking about film history and we're riffing at the same time. I it's think much more loosey goosey. Um, or do you it's think organically going that direction? It seems like it. That's why I was thinking about it. Because like some episodes, no, we kind of think... would just drop similarities early, and just yeah, also yeah, hearing we... all of the similarities in a pile. I wonder if that's interesting. I think, um, or not interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great point. I think that's a great point, and I think we're kind of naturally going that way, anyways, because we'll be talking about the movies and we're like first similarity and it's like a meta similarity or whatever about the production or right, right. source material or whatever the hell we're talking about. I think that's a great suggestion. Mm, okay. Well, we're really this showing our the... ass here by, uh, <laughs> by just like talking about <laughs> the flaws of our own podcast on. We're, on we're, podcast. we're either showing our ass or we're up our own asses or both. Our heads are up our own asses. Lots of, a lot of ass. Yeah, it is a great ass this podcast. All right, this podcast has a great ass, and all of you listeners at home have your heads right up it, all the way up it, all the way up it. I fuck that up every time. That's fine. It is and kind of like almost our catchphrase. <laughs> it's like yeah. our catchphrase for the pod, in a way. Um, I I think that's a great suggestion. This is the segment, the 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 revisions corner, <laughs> uh, where you. Like you just slyly say like, yeah, and I think uh, I need a new co-host. And I'm like, what? And you're like, nothing. And then the next episode, I'm just gone. Yeah. And you just never mention me ever again. And the new host is someone like a dog, like a literal dog, just breathing uh. into a microphone. <laughs> oh, oh, <gosh. laughs> uh, you would love that, wouldn't you? It would be fun actually to host with a dog. Yeah. Yeah. We could do it once as a guest. Yeah. Mike and Bob, and then next episode, Mike and Dog. Yeah, but I'm still there. Okay, it's <laughs> I'm still there. Okay. okay, I just don't get. I'm I'm not on the title card, but I'm there. Anyways, I think that's a good suggestion, and I think like yeah, if we peppered in just the odd like if there's a film in it, like also just really there's like a monster comparison to Kane, we could just drop that in too. Yeah, just throw it in. Yeah. Um. Well, I think that's good. Anything else? Any other suggestions? I think um, the odd minisode, I mean, we're doing that now, but maybe we pepper them in a little more often. Yeah. It's fun. Um, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, more guests. 
I think we need more guests. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. Like dogs. Mm, yeah, more dogs, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, more guests would be huge for sure, yeah. Um, yeah, um, but uh, other, uh, yeah, we did. We had a good year. It was a good uh, podcast year. Yeah, and uh, so year one was season one, and year two will still be season one. Yes. Because <laughs> every year is just uh, still season one. Yeah, I think that's a great bit. Just it's an uh, just five hundred ep- episode season. Yeah, and and we constantly are like, oh, in our episode from season one, like we reference episodes from season one. Yeah, as if it's already happened, but actually we're in season one. Yeah, I think that's so much fun. I think that's great, and it's just a fucking nightmare for like categorizing where the episodes go or whatever. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. eh? Um, for sure. eh? Yeah. How many uh, episodes do we do this year? Like it wasn't fifty-two. It was less. No, I think we did forty-eight. I think we did 48. Oh, 48. Okay? Oh, this might be 40. Bad. This might be episode 48. So we didn't get 52 That's... full episodes yet. But so we missed 4 weeks. Uh I think we took 2 or 3 weeks off during uh the Black Lives Matter protests. Yes, that's right. Cuz yeah. social media was a bit of a a wild place to be. Yes. And yeah, that's uh, right. Podcasting seemed like it was a pointless You're, thing like, to do <laughs> un, uh, wholly unnecessary specifically our podcast yeah but then a year has passed and many many people have died and we haven't stopped podcasting so <laughs> it is uh, uh just kind of goes to show just how effed up the world is i guess ain't that, ain't that the truth and we didn't learn our lessons from last year uh nope. not that they would be resolved that quickly anyway because systems of oppression mm-hmm, anyway mm-hmm. we don't need to get into that but the point is 48 but episodes in, wow <laughs> wow great it's been a you know like a terrible year but also a great year what an accomplishment you and me just talking about banal things mm-hmm. with a microphone in front of us uh just gotta but i just want to say in closing yep thanks for playing with me this year oh i was gonna say that <laughs> damn it <laughs> screw uh, you mike uh, I wanted uh, to just stuff. end it with like, oh, and it, it was so much fun, Mike. This last year, it was great to play. Yeah, we had just end on that. It was nasty. good to play with you this year. Yeah, we, thanks oh, for playing. Oh, so with fun! Me. Like, here's my best bud, Mike, my my play buddy. Like, yeah. just how does that sound? <laughs> just yeah. Uh, what do you? Hey, what are you doing today? Oh, I have a play date with Bob. <laughs> uh Oh God! It's like talking to a dog. I'm gonna start calling it a play date when I hang out with people. Like when you you're like having dinner tonight, and someone asks you, like, "Oh, like, did you play long enough with Bob?" <laughs> like two little boys in the backyard in a little sandbox, and it's like, "Okay, playtime's over." We should do a live from the sandbox episode where we're just kind of like making sandcastles and you know ro- making mud pies or whatever. Are you taking a shit on the sandcastle? <laughs> nasty, dude. Nasty. Uh, I don't like yeah. that kind of play. You <laughs> poop play. Uh, okay. okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm derailing this. I'm I'm perfectly aware of that. Anyways, yeah, it's been great, Mike. I'm glad you said that. I really appreciate it. Not enough people in my life say that they appreciate playing with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, it was. We had a good time playing. Yeah, oh. I've had a great time playing this last year, just having some good play time as two adult males. I'm gonna have to, oh, I'm gonna have to take uh, some Pepto Bismol after this. I'm feeling nauseous from all the play talk. Yeah, me too. I'm a little bit nauseous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is, uh, dare I say, a disgusting conversation we're having. Oh, also, um, I, Bob, I love your outfit right now. I could totally like my clown would love that outfit. Oh, oh, yeah. Talking about clown is actually worse for me than the, the phrase play. Clowning, I have absolutely no respect for. I loathe wow, it. I think it's fired. a terrible art form. Yeah, and I, I'll say it Even here for posterity. What about posses of insane ones? Um, I'm not a fan of ICP. Like, I... Okay, wow. <laughs> Coming down hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really just... All, all the canines at home are like, wow, Bob has said some really off-putting stuff. Hates theatrical clowning. He hates literal clowns, as in 
clown clowns and like musical clowns <laughs> and fans of musical clowns. <laughs> this what guy's about, a hater. Okay, Nothing but a hater and not enough of a player. Actually, you know, you know what? And uh, method actors, you could say you hate Jared Leto who played the Joker. He's a clown. That's true. Method, method I'm not clowns. a huge. I'm not a huge fan of Jared Leto. Although I guess uh, Jared Leto's Joker specifically is an insane clown. Yeah, he, and um, he he has a uh, posse in the uh, the movie he's in uh, with Margot Robbie, whatever the hell that movie's called. Not Suicide Birds Squad. Prey, the other one. Yeah, Suicide Squad. He has a little posse, doesn't he? So he has an insane clown posse. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, and if you're a fan of that movie, you were kind of a juggalo. Yeah. Kind of. And juggalos love to play. Oh, they love it, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, well, we this could feels just keep... over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just so abrupt and rude. Yeah, it does feel over, though. It's, <laughs> it's dead. Play Playtime is over, Mike. Yeah, playtime is over. Uh, now you have to edit all this playing. I'm keeping all this stuff in. This is funny. <laughs> oh, God. It's okay. like in the chapter headings. Oh, wait, real quick. Just the chapter headings of this episode are Fago. No, ICP, Fago, and then like two minutes about Orson Welles. Yes. And then uh, 35 minutes about how horrific the word play is used within like the context of professional actors yes. and clowns. Yeah. Um. Anyways, yeah, thanks. This this was fun. This Yeah, thanks uh, for playing with this, me, Bob. This, thanks for playing today. Oh, oh, go to hell, Mike. Go to hell. Yeah. yeah. Um okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> ay, ay, ay.